This is a McLaren 570S GT4, and it's a race car version of the regular McLaren 570S road car. But this isn't some race car that's been modified by a race team to compete. Instead, this is a race car that you can buy right now, today, from a McLaren dealership. And today, I'm going to review it. I've borrowed this McLaren race car from McLaren Beverly Hills, which is an official McLaren motorsports retailer under the O'Gara family of dealerships, which includes McLaren Beverly Hills, McLaren San Diego, and other dealerships. O'Gara also has an entire motorsports division, which I'll talk about a little later. Now, this is for the really hardcore people, the people who want something quite a bit more serious than your typical McLaren experience. I say that because this car is not street legal. It is purely built for racetrack driving, so it's pretty intense. But if you're looking for a serious track car, this could be it. But be prepared to pay. One of these costs around $200,000, which is about the same price as the regular McLaren 570S road car, but you get a lot less equipment in this car. You also get less power, as the engine in the GT4 race version is actually detuned compared to the 570S road car to meet racing class restrictions. And and in competition spec, one of these is actually heavier than the regular McLaren 570S road car, also to meet racing class restrictions. But it's a lot faster around the track, thanks to all the other upgrades. And today, I'm going to show you around those upgrades, along with the rest of the GT4's quirks and features. And then I'm going to drive the GT4 on the racetrack here at the Thermal Club, which is a private motorsports club here in Southern California, where O'Gara's motorsports division is located to provide a high-performance racetrack driving experience for their customers. And then, of course, I'm going to give the GT4 a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the 570S GT4 with fueling. Now, the fuel cap is located on this panel behind the driver's seat. You push it in with the proper fueling equipment, and this is how you fill it up with fuel. Interestingly, you also have that panel over on the passenger side for fueling as well. You can put fuel in either one. They both work. What doesn't work for fuel is the fuel door. That's carried over from the regular 570S road car, not needed in the race car, so it's just permanently closed. You can't open it, and fuel doesn't actually go in there on the race car. And next up, another quirk I love with this car is getting in. You can see there's this little handle on the side that says pull with an arrow pointing down, this big flap. That's how you get in a race car. None of these dainty passenger car door openers except Actually, the regular door opener from the regular 570S also works to let you in. You just slide your hand under this little piece of bodywork. There's a little rubber door popper thing. Push it, and the door pops open just like a regular 570S. So when you're getting in this car, you have two different options, the regular way or the cool race car way. And next up, we move on to this area where there are a few more notable items. I want to start at the base of the windshield where you have these two graphics on the front panel. On the left, you have like a lightning bolt, and then above that you have a little button you can push. That button will disable all the electronics on the car. Over on the right you have an E inside of a circle, and then above that another button you can push. That will activate the fire extinguisher system, hence the large E. Now the reason these are out here is in case you get into an accident, you crash this car, and a track safety worker has to come rescue you, they're gonna want to turn off the electronics to prevent a fire, or turn on the fire extinguisher extinguisher system if a fire has already happened, so you want to have these buttons clearly visible and clearly marked with these little decals on the car. One other interesting item in this area is the windshield, and on the windshield you can see there's like a decal going around basically the entire thing on top of the windshield. Seems like kind of an odd thing, and in the upper left there's like a little turned up corner so you can peel off the decal. 
What's this about? Well, if you're running on the track for a long time, you pick up a lot of bugs and debris on your windshield. Rather than have you sit there with washer fluid wiping your windshield, you just peel off this decal and then your windshield is clear again. There are like four of these decals mounted on top of each other and your pit crew can just keep peeling them off every time you come in for tires or brakes or fuel to make your windshield clear again. Pretty cool idea. But since I'm outside the car, let's talk about a few other body differences between the race car and the road car. The lights, interestingly, are not one. This car has all of your regular lighting from the 570S road car. You can see in back the tail lights, brake lights are the same. This this car even has turn signals and they're in the same spot and operate the same as the road car. Turn signals could be useful on a racetrack if you're trying to let other drivers know you're stalled, you put on your hazard lights, or you're slow, you're turning into the pit lane, and that's why some race cars have them. In fact, the only lighting difference between the road car and this, the race version, is in back there's no reverse light in the race car, it's not really necessary, but instead back there you have a rain light. You can turn that on in rainy conditions to let other drivers know precisely where you are so you're not involved in some accident. This is on a lot of race cars now. Now on the outside of this car, a few other very notable changes compared to the road car. The biggest is it's lowered and in front, the front splitter is a lot more aggressive intended for better aerodynamics, precisely what you'd expect to find on a race car. In back, you have the giant wing. You don't see that on your regular McLaren 570S road car. That big wing, of course, for better downforce to keep you on the track, keep you planted in place. And next up, we move on to the inside of the 570S GT4, where there are quite a few more differences compared to the road car, even more, I think, than on the outside. And the first thing you notice when you climb in is that it's harder to get in because there's a roll cage. You have this giant inside the car roll cage that goes across the entire cabin, obviously exactly what you'd want in a race car for safety purposes, but it does make ingress and egress a little bit more challenging since it takes up some of the space in the door opening. The other thing you notice right when you climb inside this car is that the interior is really stripped down. This car does not have all of the nice luxuries that the regular road car does. They've taken a lot of that crap out because this is for the most hardcore drivers who want to save as much weight as humanly possible. They don't need leather on every surface and floor mats and quilting and stitching and blah, blah, blah. So basically everything unnecessary has been removed for racetrack driving. And next up, another item you notice immediately when you climb inside is the seat, specifically the driver seat, which is a racing seat, a compliant race car driver seat with side to side head protection. So if you're in a serious high speed collision, your head will stay put and it won't kind of flop around and potentially break your neck or add more g-forces to your accident. This is a really serious seat. People with Porsche GT3 RSs are always bragging about their race seats, but this is an actual race seat in a race car. And next up, another major difference between the race car and the road car is turning it on. There's no key for this car. It's not really necessary at the racetrack. Instead, you have a rather complicated starting procedure that begins with this little switch in the middle marked master. You lift that switch up and then pull it towards you, and that kind of primes everything, gets the electronics going, and then you can start really turning it on. From there, you press the engine start stop button once, which begins to turn on the electronics. Then you press the engine start stop button a second time which turns on more stuff more electronics and then you put your foot on the brake you press the engine start stop button again and the car actually turns on. And once this car is turned on, a couple of interesting quirks and features in here, I'm gonna start with the drive modes. Now in a normal McLaren 570S, basically any McLaren actually, in order to adjust the drive modes, you have to first press this active button in the center, and that kind of lets the car know that you're ready to adjust the drive modes. Then you adjust these switches above the active button to various different settings. It's a two-step process because McLaren wants you to really confirm that you're active and ready to change the drive modes and that you didn't hit one of those switches accidentally. I mention that because in this car, the active button is always active. They figure you're in a race car, you don't need the two-step process, you probably know what you're doing. So you can adjust these drive mode dials without pressing the active button. The active button is always lit up and the car is always ready for you to change drive mode. Now you might be wondering exactly what drive modes are involved in a race car. And the answer is, 
the same ones you have in a normal McLaren. Which is kind of surprising because that means you can choose between N, S, and T, normal, sport, and track. Meaning that yes, you can take your McLaren race car out of track mode and put it in normal mode. <laughs> in case you want to drive around in your race car in normal driving mode. Seems odd, but it's possible. And next up, a couple of interesting items in the vicinity of the drive mode selector relating to the fact that some of this stuff doesn't work. McLaren lifted this panel straight out of the regular 570S road car, and some of this stuff isn't applicable to this car. You can see, for instance, there's a button to pop the front trunk, but this car doesn't really have a front trunk. The front panel opens up, but there's no storage in there. It's just equipment. You can't put anything in there. You also have a button for the power locks, but of course this version of the car doesn't have power locks in order to save weight, and there's even a button for auto start stop to turn that off, but obviously being a race car this doesn't have an auto start stop system to shut off its stoplights to save fuel. So why are these buttons here you might be wondering? The answer is of course it's cheaper to just take the same panel from the regular McLaren 570S and leave those buttons in place. Again the kind of person who's buying a race car doesn't doesn't really care, they have some extraneous buttons, they just want to go fast, so McLaren doesn't bother creating a whole new panel just for this car. And next up, go over to the steering column and you can see it's the same deal there because this car has a cruise control stock. Sticking off the steering wheel is the stock for cruise control. Again, this car doesn't have cruise control, but the regular McLaren 570S does and they just leave that in place because it's easier, simpler, and cheaper. And next up, another holdover from the road car in the GT4 race version, you have an infotainment system. Well, actually you have the infotainment screen in the exact same place as you'd have it in the road car, but its functionality is fairly limited. You have only two options, track and climate. No Bluetooth, no radio, none of that stuff. You only have what you need. And yes, McLaren decides that climate is something that you need. You push that and you can actually turn on this car's air conditioning system. Although it's worth noting that there are only two vents right in the center. They've eliminated the extra vents to the left of the steering wheel and over on the passenger side of the interior because running that ductwork would add weight and it just wasn't deemed necessary. But it apparently was deemed necessary to keep the air conditioning system, which is a pretty good idea because it can get pretty high in a race car. And next up, another notable item in this interior. I already showed you the driver's seat, but there's a passenger seat too. This is actually an option in this car. You don't have to get one in case you just want to be driving it and you want to remove the weight of a passenger and the seat. But O'Gara tells me that most people who get these cars add the passenger seat so you have a place for your instructor to sit or so you can take your friends out and show them what your car can do. And next up, another interesting item is the rear view mirror. You can see it there, another holdover from the McLaren 570S road car. A rear view mirror is a good thing to have, but this one is mostly blocked by the roll cage, as you can tell. It's still, it's there, I guess. And next up, here's a surprise. This car has power windows. You can see the window switch is the exact same as the one in the McLaren 570S road car, and the window rolls up and down automatically just like normal. Kind of an unusual surprise in a race car. You don't see that too often. Usually their windows are fixed in place. And speaking of those power windows, next to the power windows you can see the door release. This too is right out of the regular McLaren 570S road car, and you can just open up the door. Although it's worth noting that the electronics have to be on for you to do that. So that little master switch has to be flipped before you can open up the door with this electronic door release. If the electronics are off, if you're in an accident or if you haven't turned them on and you want to get out, you have to pull on this little handle kind of down in the footwell and that is the secondary release, the manual release, that will let you out of the door without the electronics being on. And speaking of the doors, in a regular McLaren you have a door panel with a nice surface you can grab to close the door, but in the race car that that was deemed unnecessary, too much weight, so instead you get this cloth loop. You want to close the door? Just pull on this. Not the most elegant solution, but an easy one that saves weight. And next up, moving on to the gauge cluster in this car. The gauge cluster is a screen, just like it is in the regular McLaren 570S, and as you can see, it looks fairly similar to a 570S gauge cluster, or at least a 570S gauge cluster in track mode, showing you the most important items for the racetrack, but it's not really 
really all that different. But one thing that is quite different in the race version is the steering wheel. You don't have a regular leather wrapped steering wheel with audio controls. Instead, you can see it's a pretty simple thing. No airbag inside here. It's intended to be as small, as lightweight as possible. And it's removable. You pull this little gold tab in the back and you can take the steering wheel out in order to make it easier to get in and out of this car. Now you can see on the steering wheel you have two buttons. The button over on the left, that's the radio button. You press that and you can talk to your pit crew or whatever through the radio. The button on your right, that is the pit lane speed limit button. On most racetracks there is a speed limit in the pit lane so that nobody gets injured. In this car you can program that speed limit and then press the button and the car won't allow you to go any faster to make sure you don't have to watch your speed when you're in the pit lane. But of course you don't want to accidentally press that button when you're out on the racetrack going high speeds and that's why the button is in kind of a shroud to make sure you don't hit it by accident. And finally, I want to move on to the center console in this car, where you can see, in addition to this panel taken out of the regular 570S road car, you also have a few other switches. Now, I already showed you what the top switch here does. It turns on the electronics before you start the car. But there are some others worth noting. One is this switch that says fire. This is under a cover. It turns on your fire extinguisher system, just like that E button on the outside of the car that I showed you. And if you press this, there are nozzles all throughout the car, inside and out, that will deploy like a fire extinguishing foam to put out any potential fire. You press this accidentally and you'll be cleaning your car for a while. And that's why this button is under this little cover to prevent anyone from doing that. The last interesting item worth noting is in the passenger footwell. You can see there's a little box in here and it says on it VBOX video. This is the system that will allow you to record all of your telemetry data from your race laps in case you want to check back later and see how you were doing, how fast you were going, how slow, whatever. It's all stored in here. And because this is the video version of this system, it also records your laps on camera, and there are several cameras inside this car. You can see one between the seats kind of pointing out so you can see where your hands are and everything in your interior. And then there's a second one on the passenger side pointing out of the windshield so you can see the road in front of you. And that way, everything is being recorded as you're driving so you can check back later and see how you did. And next up, I wanna talk about some of the number differences between this car, the GT4 race version, and the road car. And specifically, I wanna talk about how this has less power and and more weight than the regular 570S road car. They do this to fit into racing regulations in the class in which they race these. If you've ever watched a race on TV and wondered how a BMW M3 and a Lamborghini compete side by side when of course the Lamborghini should be faster, it's because these race series go for something called a balance of performance and try to make the cars all relatively even so that the races are competitive. And for the 570S, that means it has to lose a little power and gain a little weight. And people who race these competitively actually have to put ballast inside this car to increase the weight to make sure that the balance of performance is even against rivals within its race series. Now, one good thing about this car, it's not competing in that race series, so the ballast isn't in it. And so it is actually lighter than the regular road car. But the actual racing versions of these McLarens are heavier for that reason. It's also worth noting that if you just want to own one of these privately and you don't plan on campaigning it within various race series, you can actually flash the ECU, the computer, to go back to the regular power of the standard McLaren 570S road car. And then you have the same power and less weight. And with everything else this car has, it becomes a lot faster. And finally, one other interesting interesting quirk of this car is how is it sold? How do you buy a McLaren race car? Well, you have to go through an official McLaren motorsport retailer like McLaren of Beverly Hills, and then you can order one of these. McLaren of Beverly Hills actually has a few of these available, new, ready for someone who wants to take delivery, or you can order your own if you want to. But then you're thinking, okay, it shows up, what now? It's not sold with a title like a normal car because you can't just take it to the DMV and register it because it's not street legal. It doesn't even have a VIN. Instead, you get it on a bill of sale 
from McLaren just letting you know that you're the new owner of the car, and then you gotta figure out where to take it in order to race it, since you can't drive it on the road. Now, it's worth noting that McLaren of Beverly Hills and McLaren of San Diego has a pretty compelling package if you buy one of these cars and if you live here in Southern California. That's because you can drop off your McLaren race car here at the O'Gara Motorsports headquarters at the Thermal Club, and then O'Gara Motorsports will keep the car here for you and you don't have to worry about it. They'll also keep it maintained, make sure it's in good shape, and then whenever you wanna come out and drive your car, just give them a call. They'll make sure it's ready and you can just jump on the track. That's a pretty good setup instead of having to trailer it from track to track and figure out exactly how you're going to maintain a McLaren race car. O'Gara Motorsports makes it easy, they'll do everything for you. And so those are the quirks and features of the McLaren 570S GT4 race car. Now it's time to get it out on the track and see how it drives. Unfortunately, uh, track driving is hard. I usually go out on the street and tell you what it's like to drive the car, but man, that's a lot harder to do on the racetrack when you're trying to pay attention to hitting apexes and staying in the right line. As a result, my mind was so focused on the track that I had trouble actually relating my experience about driving the car, and I ended up with gems like this. It feels very, very fast, obviously. Enormously exciting. So let me just tell you about it here. This car is fast, no doubt, and it feels about as fast as the regular 570S road car, but that's really fast. Where it differs is that it feels more hard-edged. You can feel the road more sharply, there's more noise in the interior, and everything is just harsher. Generally speaking, though, I was surprised at how manageable it felt considering its race car status. It wasn't that excessively loud or hot or difficult to get in and out of, and of course I found it fun to drive in the same way that the road car is. Steering is tight, acceleration is great, shifting is quick. It really just feels like a stripped down more focused version of the road car, which makes sense because that's what it is. And so that's the McLaren 570S GT4. This is an impressive car, but it has a rather limited appeal. Wealthy car enthusiasts who want a McLaren, but one they can't drive on the street. A $200,000 car that is purely specialized for racetrack driving. Then again, if you're really into racetrack driving, this might just be the ultimate track car. And now it's time to give the 570S GT4 a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, this thing looks cool. Not beautiful, but functional, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Acceleration, the road car does 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. is probably a hair slower, and it gets a 9 out of 10. Handling is tremendous, of course, and it gets a 10 out of 10. Fun factor is excellent, and it gets a 10 out of 10. Finally, cool factor, and this is really cool, a McLaren race car you can buy. It gets an 8 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 44 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. This car doesn't have much in the way of tech or equipment, but with power windows and an infotainment screen, it has more than most race cars, and it gets a 3 out of 10. Comfort is very bad, but not as awful as some race cars I've driven. It gets a 2 out of 10. Quality is fine. I'm sure the car is no less reliable than a regular 570S, but the interior is totally stripped out. Not very nice, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Practicality is horribly low, of course. Few cars are more impractical than one you can't drive on the street. It gets a 1 out of 10. Finally, value, and this is decent. For most people, it's a bad value, but track drivers will appreciate it. I'm just not sure how many people are in the market for a $200,000 track car. It gets a 5 out of 10 for a total daily score of 16 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 60 out of 100. I've never Doug scored a race car before, but here's how the 570S GT4 fares against some track-focused road cars I've reviewed. Of course, it loses overall because it's purely designed for track duty, but if that's what you want, a pure track car, this McLaren sure is a lot of fun.